দেখো এবার বোধ কাজ করবে হ্যাঁ স্যার এবার কাজ করবে হ্যাঁ কপি করতে আমার ভুল হয়েছে লিখতে ভুল হয়েছে গুড আফটারনুন স্যার ইয়েস গুড আফটারনুন টু एवरीवन আই থিংক আ ফিউ মোর পিপল আর সাপোজ টু কাম ইয়া লেট देम কাম ইন How many people are there in the group? More than 20? Twenty-two, sir, I think. Twenty. <clears throat> but still, it's only 16. Okay, let me wait for a couple of minutes. Okay, let them come because it's already seven minutes past 12. Uh, the thing which I am going to discuss today, uh, this is Applied Mechanics Laboratory and uh, we are supposed to do, as I mentioned in the last class, we are supposed to do some experiments. I do not know whether you have got the um, videos of those experiments. Have you got the videos? from some other group or something like that. Have you got the videos? No, sir. Not yet. Okay, so maybe uh, today I'll go to the university. After this discussion, I'll go to the university. I'll try to collect it. Or uh, if somebody comes, okay, let me check first because it's not available with me. It's available with, the, with our specialization in charge. So I'll have to collect it from him and then I can pass on. But the thing is uh, that the videos are a little bit bigger. So it may be difficult to, to send through email or something like that. Either I can do it through Drive 
or if somebody stays nearby he can come with a pen drive i can give it to him the whole lot i can give it okay so these are the two options so let me go to the university first and i will inform you what is to be done not today maybe tomorrow or maybe some other day okay so the topic which i was i am intently uh, planning to uh, discuss today as i told the last, last class also rather i hinted towards uh, that that it's basically related to one of the fundamental three properties it is related to toughness okay and uh, as as long as toughness is concerned our first objective uh, as far as the experiment is concerned our first objective should be to define what is meant by toughness and then how we are going to measure toughness and even if uh, we we are able to measure toughness is it the only way to measure toughness that question also to be answered but before i enter into this particular domain of defining toughness uh, let me put some other things a story sort of in front of you okay let me switch on the video as well <coughs> though the video has nothing to do with the story but still it's basically uh, a story not a, exactly a story it's a fact uh, it happened during world war uh, so far my knowledge got is it was uh, during first world war number of warships number of warships which were kept on the north sir voice ta khub hocche tahole ami eta ke video ta kete di dekho to is it okay now sir ota or network er problem amra clearly shunte pacchi sir amra bhalei shunte pacchi video on kore sir ota or network problem thik ache thik ache thik ache thik ache thik ache ektu dekhe nao ke bolchile problem ta ke bolchile jagdish ke bolchile problem bishwajit bishwajit ha sir ekhon shona jacche dekho to Okay, the thing is, uh, it was basically it happened during the first World War, where number of uh, warships, warships, okay, uh, they were uh, kept on the northern sea, and in the northern sea, one fine morning, rather I would say, not a fine morning or a bad morning, uh, one day it was observed that number of ships they 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 were distracted. distracted man means basically there were there was they were broken into pieces number of ships and it was it was a sort of a coincidence but people started to think about that it was some sort of casualty caused by the opponent etc but actually it was not so it was sheer mechanical failure what type of failure it was the thing is uh, three things contributed to that particular failure okay it's it's uh, uh, just a mere coincidence that number of ships they they broke at a at a time but the exact reason behind that that failure uh, that breakage is uh, something very very uh, engineering in nature first cause was at that point of time during first world war etc during that time the usual practice of ship building was welding to 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 join two hulls or two to metallic parts through welding that was the common practice if you go to the welding shop uh, have you already gone to the welding shop or at least you have you have gone through some discussion on welding shop yes sir yes sir is it is, was it with me or somebody else uh sir we have uh, seen a video on gautam nandi sir yeah sir. but that is a video you have seen but in the in this semester on the last semester sir on the last semester sir. last semester you went and probably in i was not semester, the second semester sir in the second semester but probably i was not the class teacher there no sir yes sir you you were not the class i teacher. was not the class anyway that that's why i am asking because i i will repeat that thing now so the thing is in case of welding whenever you go for welding even today uh particularly arc welding or any other type of welding the main problem associated with welding is there are welding defects there are always whatever may be the quality of welding whatever may be the practice of welding whatever uh, method you are follow you are following the, the the welding defects will be there okay now this welding defects means what welding defects means inside a welding there are pores there are cavities there are small micro cracks and you know that welding uh, is often done uh, in in a in an atmosphere where oxygen cannot enter okay because oxygen if it is allowed to enter it forms oxides and the oxides are basically a flake like structure a plate like structure a two dimensional structure and uh, if you uh, 
understand the term stress concentration then at the ages of that particular flake at the ages of that particular flake there is considerably high amount of stress there are different type of uh, cast are different type of metallic metallic things steel can have different type of grades we do not want those particular grade of steel those particular grade of cast iron where the the carbides or those sort of things are present in the form of flakes oxides are present in the form of flakes or sulfides are present in the form of flakes we do not want flakes means a two dimensional a plate like structure i am showing my mobile here this sort of a structure a plate like structure not a sphere sort of thing if it is a sphere it would have been nice but if this sort of a structure is there that means a plate like structure then at the ages when that sample will be loaded will be subjected to some mechanical load at the ages there will be stress concentration that we do not want in case of welding if oxides are allowed to form that mean oxygen is allowed to come inside that particular welding domain welding zone weld pool the molten metal pool then oxide flakes form and those oxide flakes they are also a detrimental to the help uh, to the health of that particular component or to the health of that particular welding joint so if the quality of welding is not very good then definitely this oxide flakes can be there uh, some pores can be there some uh, micro cracks can be there some discontinuities can be there it is a big subject itself welding welding itself is a big subject and we the mechanical engineers we should have a clear cut idea about various domains of uh, welding various techniques of welding more precisely i would say various type of problems associated with welding okay so actually these are related to the story in the sense that in during that time the welding quality was not that good during that time okay so as the welding quality was not good that means the the in case of a ship when the when the metallic pieces are connected together with the help of welding so those weldings they were also containing so many defects so defects were there that is one thing defects were there and mainly the defects are uh, developed or defects are present as because the welding quality was not that good this is condition number 1 presence of defects in abundance lot of defects were present because of poor quality welding first second the warships what they are supposed to carry they are supposed to carry the say maybe the cannons and this and that different arms of arms and ammunition so they are supposed to carry huge load armors do huge armors different type of other things so the amount of load acting on the ship the amount of stress acting on this particular joints though that are not at all very small high amount of stress are acting on the joints so one the joints are having the the welding and the welding is basically not flawless so there are a lot of flaws lot of cracks micro cracks etc etc lot of oxide flakes one second there is large amount of stress acting on those weldings not on the not only on the welding on the whole body whole body of the ship the weldings are also there suppose you are thinking about a pressure vessel if you think about a pressure vessel what you you do you take a sheet this sort of a sheet you take this sort of a sheet and then you fold it then you fold it and then create a welding on top so that it takes the shape of a hollow cylinder and in this way we actually make the pressure vessels okay we can go for riveting we can go for welding but this is the usual practice now while making a carved shape carved shape yes we can go for some different techniques are there i am not entering into those things but finally we'll go for welding now this welding this is never as strong as the material itself let me go to a different subject you have gone through strength of material na? already done strength of material one yes sir yeah it's done so in case of strength of material have you solved some problems where joint deficiency was involved no sir which book you followed sir b r johnstones okay uh, i think for all of you for all of you i would request you to uh, go through if possible to some other books as well i do not know whether in b r johnston it was there or not but joint deficiency is a vital thing let me explain uh, just a minute just a minute please wait let me take an example just a minute
Yeah, fine. Okay, I have taken a book. I'm just doing it like this. Can you see me clearly? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, this sort of a sheet. This sort of a sheet. I am just making a sort of a cylinder. I want to make a cylinder. So if I want to make a cylinder, I will have to go for welding. I'll have to go for welding along this particular surface, isn't it? It was basically something like this. Now I am folding it, folding it to give it a cylindrical sort of a shape. And now I must weld. I must weld along this particular line. Let me show you here. Yes. Along this particular line, I must weld, isn't it? Along this line. Now the question is, if I do the welding along that particular line, and if I accept that particular welding can have a lot of defects, that means that particular line along which I am joining, I am doing welding, that particular line is basically a weak section of the whole thing. The remaining portion is basically the metal itself. I am carving it and making a welding. So welding joint, welded joint, that is basically a weak point. So if we think about the efficiency, efficiency of the welded joint, that means the material itself, once again, I'm showing you the material itself. If this is the pressure vessel, then at this portion, at this portion, at this portion, if I keep some fluid inside, all, all on the on the wall, definitely some stress is acting. What type of stress? You know, circumferential stress and longitudinal stress. Fine. And which one is bigger? You know, circumferential stress is bigger. Now, circumferential stress, if I show the circumferential stress here, what is the direction of the circumferential stress? This way and this way. This way and this way, horizontal. If I keep the pressure vessel like this, then it is horizontal, circumferential stress, isn't it? Now, the circumferential stress, it wants to open the crack. If I have a defect here along this line, if I have a defect, the circumferential stress wants to open it. And circumferential stress is the biggest stress. It's bigger than the longitudinal stress. Now, if inside that particular pressure vessel, if I have a weak zone, weak zone, and the weak zone is not as strong as the material itself. Am I clear? Can you understand? The weak zone, the junction, it is not as strong as the, as the, as the material itself. So, circumferential stress develops at each and every point, but along that particular line, circumferential stress may be sufficient to break it into two pieces to cause a sort of cracking, okay? So that sort of opening can take place. That's why I will I will request you all of you to revisit, to revisit that particular chapter of pressure vessel and try to get, do you have the book written by me and Devabrotoda? Devabrotoda, anyone having that book? No, sir. You don't have, you can come to the university and try to collect it because in that particular book, what we have tried, we have tried to give a practical overview of these sort of things. Okay. Anyway, that's not a, I mean, mandatory thing that you will have to get it. No, but the thing concept is welded joint. It is not as strong as the material itself. Suppose I'm joining these two pieces, these two pieces, we have a welding in between the strength of that particular portion, the welded joint portion and the strength here or strength here, they are not same. They are not same. The strength at the welded joint is say 80%, 75% of the strength here. The strength here. Circumferential stress at this particular point will not be able to open. But circumferential stress at this particular junction may be able to open. So that's why efficiency goes down. Efficiency of a pressure vessel goes down if welding is there. But welding must be there. How otherwise we can prepare a, a cylindrical shape like that? So welding must be there welding defect is also there if welding defect is there efficiency is not 100% so all these things are there fine so when if i go back to that particular story it was welded joint so definitely high amount of uh, say defects were there because the quality of welding was not good moreover high amount of load was acting because it was supposed to carry huge amount of amount of arms and ammunitions and third in the northern sea, the temperature of the sea water is very, very low, maybe close to close to uh, zero degrees Celsius or close to one, two degrees Celsius, quite low. So low temperature, presence of flow and high stress. These three things combined together to call to cause a catastrophic failure. And that took place in, in case of those uh, those warships. OK, people realize these things later, not 
people at, at that moment people understood it no people analyze this whole thing and then people realize that yes this is the reason or these are the reasons okay now in that particular light in the light of that discussion in the light of that story we should focus on the discussion on uh, toughness toughness is something is a property yes in the last class i told you by virtue of which a material resists propagation of crack or fracture no fracture and propagation of crack doesn't mean the same thing doesn't mean the same thing we can have we can think about as a mechanical engineer we should be able to understand we must appreciate that inside a pressure vessel inside a crankshaft inside an axle of a wheel inside a piston ring there may be at some point inside the howrah bridge inside the howrah bridge inside means inside the material of made of uh, we, uh, by which the howrah bridge is made of we can locate yes one crack is there that doesn't mean that the crack is there and it is propagating from this side to that side to cause failure no it may not there can be a portion that the crack is slowly growing every month it is growing by 1 mm every year it is growing by 1 mm finally after 10 years it's crossing the distance and finally it's breaking it into two parts one part one particular uh, iron pillar it is breaking into two parts this sort of thing happens so it does not necessarily mean that resistance to fracture more correct word should be resistance to propagation of crack toughness is a property by virtue of which a material resists crack propagation through it okay uh, usually i give an example uh, which which uh, once again i am giving that in case of say we have a uh we have i have my remote with me yes tv remote with me just think about that this is one one solid material solid material okay and i am creating a notch here i am creating a notch here a particular section i am creating a notch a v shaped notch i am creating i think you can appreciate you can understand what is i am meaning a v shaped notch i am creating here so now if i give a load on this particular object in this situation and with the notch they will not behave identically the presence of the notch the presence of the notch will make it weaker the presence of the notch will make it weaker at the tip of the notch at the tip of the notch there will be some stress concentration local stress at the tip of that particular notch will be higher than the applied stress what is applied stress suppose i am pulling it apart i am pulling this thing apart i am giving a load on top this particular load divided by this cross sectional area will give me apparent stress apparent stress or we call it nominal stress now if i create a notch here on the wall if i create a notch cut it a notch created a sharp notch created then because of the presence of that sharp notch at the tip of that particular notch the stress will be much higher than the nominal or the apparent stress so now we are basically creating stress concentration just imagine one more example i am giving uh this one can i can i no not this one oh oh just a minute just a minute please hold on yes 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 just a minute sorry somebody came and i have to attend yes let me show you okay i have a paper i want to break it i want to split it into two parts what we do i think every one of us do this thing do this thing what i am actually doing i am causing some stress concentration i am causing some stress concentration along this particular line i am causing some stress concentration it is almost equivalent to equivalent to creating a notch creating a notch yes if needed i can create a notch as well i am creating a notch on top i am creating a notch on top and now if i pull them apart it will basically break into pieces it will break into pieces like this okay so actually when i am creating a notch 
I am basically including a stress concentration. Stress concentration, one particular point, one particular domain I am creating where the stress is more than the apparent stress or the nominal stress. Okay. So in this particular case also, if we give a notch, if we create a notch and then if I hit that sample or say give some mechanical load, then at the tip of the stress, at the tip, sorry, at the tip of the notch, there will be high amount of high amount of stress and that stress will basically cause the material to fail. In this particular experiment will come later. Before come to the ex coming to the experiment, let me tell you one more thing. When that sort of cal cal catastrophic failure happened in case of the warships, people started to think about that this is a big loss. Big loss. If the ships break like this, how to take care of that? People started to think about two things. One, people started to think about this new property, which is toughness. Initially, more than 200 years back, people did not know, 150 years back, people did not know the term toughness. The new term came, that is toughness. Okay, what is toughness? I've already told you, resistance to crack propagation. But this particular new term came later. Now, people started to think about, okay, if it is so, then before putting the putting the uh, metallic piece in, into welding, before welding, uh, welding the metallic pieces, we should do some testing. Or even after doing the welding, we can go for some testing and check whether the material is breaking or not. There are two different methods by which people try to think about test how much is the uh, uh, strength of that particular material which is welded. Welded. What type of test they did? One type of test was known as drop weight forge test. Drop weight forge test. And another is dynamic tear test. This sort of test people tried to develop. But for this type of test, they used big samples, large samples. They used large samples like, suppose this is a sample. This is a sample. Another sample is here. We are basically joining them. We are basically joining them together, welded joint. And then I am creating on the, on. Uh, I'm holding the whole sample like this. And from top, from top, I am leaving a particular weight. From top, I am leaving a particular, dropping a particular weight. So on the lower side, on the lower side, there will be tensile stress, you know, there will be tensile stress and this tensile stress will cause fracture of these two specimens. So initially they were like this. On the lower side, we have created a crack, created a notch, created a crack, and we are dropping a huge load from top. What will happen? It will split into two parts. Okay, because on the lower side, there is huge amount of tensile stress. So now the question is, if I have to do the test like this, then a lot of samples I will have to spare. A lot of samples I will have to break. That is not intended. We do not want that much of sample to be lost. So we cannot do the experiment on a big sample, join them together, two big samples joined together, dropping a heavy load from top. On the lower side, there will be tensile stress and then that tensile stress, whether it is able to break it or not. In this way, dynamic tear test or drop weight force test were used to be carried by people. But that's a not, not a good option. Then two options came, which did not require these two options. They do not require high or big, large samples. No, they're not required. We developed, people developed two different simple techniques by which we can find out how much is the toughness of a material. One is IZOT test, which we are going to do. And second is Charpy test. That facility also we have in our laboratory. Uh, and uh, if you come, somebody I can show you. Uh, otherwise, I do not know whether in the video it has been shown or not. That I do not remember exactly. You can check. So two tests. One, once again, I repeat, one is IZOT test, one is CHARP test. IZOT is basically a British procedure and CHARP is basically an American procedure. Okay. Uh, so globally, IZOT, CHARP, both these things we, we use. But from that, we get some sort of idea about the toughness of a material. Again, I am deviating from what I was claiming. I was saying that Toughness can be found out using this test. And now I'm saying some sort of idea. These are both of these things are not same. They are not same. We actually get some idea about the toughness of a material using the IZOT test or using the Charpy test, not the exact toughness value. 
as you have already gone through your material science coursework material science coursework already already finished isn't it or you are yes sir yes sir it's already finished okay if it is already finished then you should understand that inside a material there are a lot of crystal defects lot of crystal defects there can be point defect there can be line defect there can be a surface defect lot of defects are there out of those defects particularly line defect that is edge dislocation and screw dislocation they contribute substantially to deformation deformation now if we think about a material we are preparing an isod specimen isod specimen isod specimen how does it look like it looks like a sort of a this sort of a space this sort of a sample with a notch here with a notch on one side okay we in the experimental when you will go through the video you will find it better in the experiment what we do we fix on the lower side we have a notch here we put a heavy load at the top a swinging load a swinging hammer comes and hit it at the top what will happen here is the notch here is the hitting point so there will be some amount of bending moment some amount of bending moment this hitting hitting means hitting by the hammer this will create a bending moment bending moment means bending stress you know sigma is equal to my by uh, uh, my by i so you can find out how much is the bending stress now at this particular uh, i mean the notch the bending stress is developed and because of that bending stress and also because of the stress concentration caused by that particular crack notch so one bending stress is high at this point and second the notch is present because of that there is high amount of stress at the tip of the notch which breaks the sample why i am going back to the point of dislocation point of edge and screw dislocation because there may be one sample there may be one sample one type of sample one type of material we will go for two experiments one with brass and one with aluminium in case of brass yes we are creating a bending stress that stress concentration at the tip of the crack is there notch is there so it will break into pieces no doubt the top part will go away no point no but in case of aluminium there are a lot of dislocations which can move whenever i give some load here whenever i give some load here the bending stress yes in case of aluminium also bending stress will develop but at the same time inside the material shear stress will also develop and that shear stress will allow those dislocations to move that's why in case of aluminium the sample just a minute just a minute okay so in case of aluminium those dislocations come into actions and those dislocations they cause some deformation not only fracture okay everything is getting jumbled up i know let me let me summarize the whole thing in a nutshell first we are going to test what isot test what is isot test we will hold a sample like this vertical with a notch with a notch a swinging pendulum will come and hit it on top there will be bending stress developed and the notch is also present so the sample will have high amount of stress at the tip of that particular notch owing to the presence of notch as well as the bending stress because of this this, this hitting okay so one the presence of stress and second the presence of notch they are creating high amount of localized stresses and that stress is causing the sample to break in which case in case of brass in case of aluminium the same thing happens but in case of aluminium we will not find during the video experiment you will see that the aluminium sample is not breaking why in case of aluminium the same thing happens the stress is high the notch is there everything is there but although the stress at the crack tip notch tip is high that particular stress is also causing some dislocations inside the material to move the material is having a typical structure is having a typical structure and that structure favors dislocation motion so what happens the material does not break 
but it breaks to some extent but not completely like brass it breaks to some extent but sufficient amount high amount of plastic deformation also takes place dislocation motion causes plastic deformation causes plastic deformation so in case of aluminium because of the high stress the dislocation motion will take place along with some amount of small amount of crack propagation but in case of brass it will be only crack propagation because brass has a different structure and that particular structure does not allow the dislocations to move does not allow does not allow that much of liberty to the dislocations to move the movement of dislocation in case of aluminium is much more than the movement of dislocation in case of a brass sample because of their crystal structure aluminium has a particular structure brass has a particular structure the structure of aluminium is favorable for the motion of dislocation that's why the stress at the tip of the notch though it is very high the dislocations also move along with the crack propagation so small amount of crack propagation along with high amount of this deformation that takes place in case of brass no deformation only the crack propagation and it breaks it into two pieces any question from anyone <coughs> if you don't have the question then i'll I, i'll move over to the next discussion the next discussion is related to in case of i am talking about dislocation you will have to go through yes i have already talked that in case of strength of material you will have to think about the welded joint efficiency maybe you have to go back to strength of material but, but that particular chapter similarly in case of uh, dislocation and other things whatever i am saying now you will have to revisit the chapter of crystal defects in case of material science okay if needed we can have a full fledged discussion on that we can spare a whole class on that no problem but you will have to revisit what is meant by dislocation i am telling you different type of defects are there out of them only line defects are mostly responsible mostly responsible for the deformation of a material in case of aluminium having an fcc structure the dislocations can move easily the dislocations can move easily so whenever i am giving some load from outside load from outside it may be an impact load it may be an impact load like this impact uh, hammer is impacting okay it may be a mechanical monotonous loading i am pushing it pushing it and pushing it that can be another type of loading whatever may be whatever may be the type of load the stress developed inside the material is there and that stress can cause two things two things one motion of dislocation that causes deformation or propagation of crack that causes fracture in aluminium motion of dislocation is possible that's why fracture or the crack propagation is small motion of dislocation is the predominant thing in case of brass because of its structure the crack propagation is more predominant than deformation in fact almost no deformation takes place so what we are getting if we do this simple experiment we will go through the experiment i know if you go through the video you will understand how the experiment is done we get we try to get how much energy is absorbed by the sample before fracture in the experiment you will find brass is breaking into two pieces and the swinging pendulum the swinging pendulum it is fitted with a scale on top with a scale on top there is a particular pivotal point about which the pendulum is rotating about which the pendulum is rotating so a scale is attached to the topmost point and from that we can get a reading in foot pound energy in foot pound in foot pound we can find out how much energy is absorbed by this particular sample before fracture in case of aluminium we will see we are getting another value but that is not basically causing fracture that is causing this sort of a situation i am holding it like this holding it like this a portion a broken portion broken portion still at associated a broken portion is still associated with aluminium like this but not completely broken in case of brass two two pieces completely broken in case of aluminium maybe like this maybe like this so an incomplete propagation of the notch incomplete propagation of the crack and sufficient amount of plastic deformation the whole thing it is taking a shape like this a plastic deformation is taking place so from these two results we will get two different isod numbers what is isod number isod number is basically the amount of energy needed to break it 
but aluminum is not breaking how can i get that this is the isod number from the scale no actually this is not the isod number what you can say is that isod number of aluminum is higher than the value you are getting because that value is causing incomplete propagation of the crack incomplete propagation of the crack so that is suppose the value is coming out to be 27 so 27 foot pound that is not the value needed for breaking the aluminum specimen we need more than that so the isod number of aluminum specimen is not 27 it is more than 27 how much it is we do not know maybe 35 maybe maybe 38 maybe even more that i do not know but we can get some sort of idea that okay 27 is that energy 27 foot pound is that much of energy which is capable to cause some amount of cracking incomplete cracking incomplete fracture not complete fracture but in case of brass suppose the value is coming out to be 10 that means 10 foot pound of energy is needed to break it 10 foot pound of energy is sufficient to net break it so we can go for a comparative analysis comparison between a brass sample and an aluminium sample so this sort of comparative understanding about the toughness of a material that much we can get from this experiment not exactly the value of toughness to get the exact value of toughness we need something else that is known as k1c just note it down k1c capital k then 1c okay k1c is basically the toughness of a material these are not the procedures isot test charpy test these are not the procedures which can give us k1c of a material no k1c is synonymous with toughness that is known as plain strain fracture toughness but what we are doing here is not at all plain strain fracture toughness is not at all absolute toughness it's not at all k1c what we are doing it to get some sort of relative understanding about which material is more tough which material is less tough brass is less tough aluminum is more tough why aluminum is more tough because it requires high amount of energy to even partially break it why brass is less tough only 10 10 foot pound of energy is good enough to break it into pieces is it clear is it clear or you have some questions yes sir okay. yes sir clear okay, fine now we are left with one more point to discuss because it's very difficult to discuss all these things uh, if we are in the classroom if we are in the laboratory probably it will be much better for us to demonstrate all those things but what i would request you to collect the video as soon as possible so that after this discussion you can see the video and probably you will you will have some questions the next part of the thing is okay fine we are going for breaking of a brass sample we are trying to break the aluminum sample but it is not breaking completely partial breakage is taking place we are noting down that isod number of brass is say 13 or say 15 or isod number of aluminum is more than 27 or 30 okay fine a comparative analysis we can get what else two other things are very important if you see the broken piece of aluminum or insufficiently broken incompletely broken piece of aluminum you will find the surface is tore to us the surface is tore to us the surface is very very rough in case of brass if you take the broken piece if you take the broken piece this is the broken piece and this is the original piece you can bring them together and one will just fit into other no problem you can just put them together and they will just match yeah you will have to use some glue or something so that you can fix it otherwise they can match but in case of aluminium once the sample is broken or even not broken completely partially if you want to bring it back the surface is so rough the two surfaces will not not match so in one case the crack propagates the crack propagates along a smooth line a smooth plane in case of brass like glass break glass into two pieces then bring the two pieces together it will again fit in case of a broken say uh, porcelain cup bring the two pieces together you use the suitable glue they will fit but in case of a material like aluminium if you bring the broken pieces together they will not exactly match the interface is so rough the interface area is so rough they will not match a tortoise path is there so these tortoise path it symbolizes a particular type of fracture we call it ductile fracture ductile fracture is associated with tortoise path not a not a single simple plane in case of brittle fracture it is more like a simple plane so it's a smooth simple plane in case of ductile fracture it's not so it's a tortoise path 
so this is one point which is to be taken care of and the second point is second point is there is an effect because when i told you the story that particular low temperature that issue was also there that issue was also there now i must address in taking the clue from the story what is the effect of temperature that is also quite important issue what is the effect of temperature if you go to any any smithy shop kono commercial i if you go to any smithy shop you will find that the person who is working there he is using a particular type of furnace amra banglay boli hapor he is using that particular furnace he is raising the temperature of the sample temperature of the metallic piece and then giving it a blow then using the hammer why is it to break no it is to deform it is to deform the sample and give it a definite shape she ekta ekta kono component banache he is preparing a particular component it can be a carved one it can be a uh, irregularly shaped one it can be a knife it can be a, a blade of a saw anything whatever he is preparing he is hitting a piece of metal and then giving it a blow why to give it a definite shape to deform it so at high temperature he knows at high temperature it is easy to deform a sample have you gone to the forging shop hoyeche forging hoyeche no sir if you go to the if you go to the forging shop we have those facilities in fact you will have to do those things by your own hand we are heating a sample heating means raising the temperature of a sample putting it inside a furnace and then then taking the red hot sample out and then giving it a blow with hammer why to give it a definite shape to give it a definite shape to flatten it to give it a definite shape we are using the hammer the mechanical loading so that particular person who is working in the smithy shop he knows it well that at high temperature if i give a metal a blow uh, give a, me a me mechanical loading on a on a hot metal it takes a shape easily if it is in cold at cold temperature or room temperature it will be very hard to deform it and give it a shape if i increase the temperature it will be easy so increasing the temperature increases the chance of deformation increases the chance of deformation decreasing the temperature decreases the chance of deformation increases the chance of fracture if you drop if you drop a piece of steel from your hand on ground if you drop a piece of steel from your hand on ground it will not break everyone knows it will not break if you drop a piece of chalk yes it will break chalk is a brittle material it will break in case of a steel steel component if you drop it it will not break the thing is if you drop that particular steel which is kept at a very low temperature maybe minus 20 degree minus 30 degree celsius you are picking it out and you are dropping it on the floor it can break i am not saying it will it can break at low temperature it can break its toughness goes down so what is the effect of toughness on isod number higher the isod number higher is the toughness relative toughness yes not absolute toughness higher the isod number higher the temperature sorry higher the temperature higher is the isod number lower the temperature lower is the isod number so if we repeat this particular experiment which you will see in the video if we repeat this particular experiment with a hot sample isod number will increase if we repeat with a cold very cold sample minus 15 degree celsius then the isod number will decrease maybe at very low temperature the aluminium sample will behave like gas it will break into two pieces not a tartarus path at all no question of incomplete fracture etc so this is the take home message not only the isod number is giving us a comparative understanding we also should appreciate yes if possible if we can yes it is possible in our laboratory it is possible if we can put it in the furnace and bring it back and put it there hold it there in a hot position hot condition and then making it a blow maybe the brass sample will not break the brass sample will deform like aluminum the opposite will happen if i cold if i make it very very cold maybe minus 20 degree celsius aluminum sample put it there giving it a blow maybe it will break like brass i hope you can understand what i want to mean that with temperature with temperature a material becomes with increase in temperature a material becomes more and more tough 
with decrease in temperature a material becomes less and less tough more tough materials we call them ductile less tough materials we call them brittle no this is not the only definition of ductility and brittleness no not at all when we will discuss about stress strain diagram when we will discuss about tensile test i will recall i will come back to this particular topic and combining this discussion and that discussion which i am going to make on the next day maybe in the case of tensile test combining these two discussions we will then come to a conclusion what is meant by a ductile material what is meant by a brittle material for the time being we should take it like this the take home message is like that if the material has higher toughness we can call it it is ductile if the material has lower toughness we can call it okay it's brittle but you know there must be a particular line in between a line in between above this and lower than this that particular line it's not possible to be drawn right now when we will discuss about there was some tendency people try to say something that okay if it absorbs more than 20 joule of energy then it is uh, ductile if it absorbs less than 20 joule no i am not entering into those discussions it's not possible to do it now not possible to do it now it's it, it will uh, only impart some confusion for the time being let us come to this point that if isod number is high high means higher than the other one isod number is higher than the other then i can say the material with higher isod number is tougher than the other we should not say this one is ductile this one is brittle no not that just at this moment we will go for tensile test and then we will revisit this particular experimental discussion experiment and discussion and then we will conclude what is meant by ductile what is meant by brittle but for the time being we can compare two specimens one is more tough one is less tough depending on isod number higher isod number means higher toughness lower isod number means lower toughness at the same time we should appreciate if the temperature is higher a material becomes tougher and tougher and tougher if i increase the temperature whatever may be the material if i decrease the temperature whatever may be the material its toughness goes down down and down i am not deliberately interested to use the term ductile and brittle i am keeping it for the next day but for the time being higher toughness lower toughness this much we can see this material is having higher toughness this material is having lower toughness and the speciality of higher toughness is what the surface of the fracture the surface of the fracture be it incomplete be it complete is taught to us very rough what is the feature of 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 uh, uh, material having lower toughness lower toughness the surface is smooth like glass if i break if i drop a piece of glass it will break into pieces bring those pieces together they will fit with one another nicely you can use a glue and set them together in case of a ductile material in case not again once again i am uh, getting getting carried saying ductile in case of higher higher toughness material it's not possible it's not possible the surface is so rough that you cannot bring them together and one will uh, nicely fit against the other no it will not be there so these are the experimental things another small thing is there i have told you about the notch i have told you about the notch you can think about different types of notch we can have when we will see the experiment we will find you can have different type of notches we can have a triangular notch a triangle type of notch we can go for a u shaped notch we can go for some other notch different type of geometries of notches are available the notch geometry it also plays a very very vital role if the notch is very sharp we can think about a v we can think about a v this is the sample this is a sample we can think about a v notch this sort of a v notch inside it okay the v notch can have can have a particular depth the depth means from this side to this point there particular depth but we can make it wider wider we can go for this type of a v notch or we can go for this small type of a v notch can you can you understand what i am meaning the the openness the open end of the v notch can be big the open end can be small but the depth is same the depth is same if it is so in the particular case where the depth and that particular opening has a particular type of ratio then that particular specimen is more prone to fracture if i go for a wider wider gap wider gap the specimen may not be that amount of uh, a fracture prone if the gap is small that means we are creating a sharp crack sharp crack 
if i think about this this distance and this distance the ratio of this and this it is something else if this one is big and this is the depth this much is the the width this much is the opening and this much is the depth then this one by this one is coming out to be one coming out to be one but if this is the this is the opening and this much is the depth then this by this is not at all one if this sort of a thing happens that the opening is small and the depth is big this sort of a case this sort of a case not this this sort of a case then definitely the surface or the material will be more prone to fracture so it depends on lot of factors lot of factors on temperature on the material itself on the type of the geometry of the notch not only that the position of the notch also plays into comes into picture so there are a lot of varieties but in the experiment do we do that no in the experiment what we do we take a sample we take a known sample a known geometry of the sample a cylindrical sample cross section is cylindrical we create a notch and that notch is created as per ASTM specification american society for testing of materials ASTM specification accordingly we prepare a notch so we are not allowed to create a notch of my own no not at all we are creating identical notch inside brass inside aluminium in aluminium we are creating a notch exactly the same type of notch we are creating in brass and then putting them for heating and we are getting different results this is isot test charpy test is similar to that but in charpy test here in isot we are holding the sample like this in a vertical position the lower part is fixed upper part is hit by a hammer in case of charpy it is held in this sort of a bending configuration at the midpoint the the hammer will have uh, hit the hammer will hit like this the hammer will hit at the midpoint so that is a different configuration but the basic principle same basic principle same what we are doing we are trying to find out how much energy a specifically prepared specific geometry sample absorbs before to fracture it may be complete fracture it may be partial fracture actually we want to go for complete fracture in case of brass we are able to create complete fracture and we have found okay 10 10 uh, uh, foot pound is good enough 10 foot pound is good enough for creating fracture that's fine the same sample when we are putting it same means the same geometry same configuration sample for aluminium when we are putting it we are getting incomplete fracture and we are getting the value to be say 27 28 30 and it's still not breaking so our conclusion is brass can break by absorbing 10 foot pound of energy or maybe little bit even lower i do not know even 9 foot pound of energy will do it or not whether this is just just the sufficient amount we do not know but 10 foot pound of energy is good enough to break it but 27 foot pound or 30 foot pound of energy is not good enough to break than identically prepared sample of aluminium so brass is less tough aluminium is more tough this much we can conclude if we repeat the experiment with different temperatures we will find that aluminium even though at room temperature it is absorbed in 27 or 30 foot pound of energy at lower temperature it is absorbing less at higher temperature it is absorbing more for brass the same thing at lower temperature it is absorbing less amount of energy at higher temperature it is absorbing high amount of energy so these are the simple take home messages from these experiments i hope that if you go to the video of the experiment probably you will uh, definitely have end up with some questions and then definitely we can discuss i will try to share with you i do not know whether in google drive i can do it i'll try to do it through google drive or if somebody comes to the university on on thursday i'll be going today also i'll be going maybe around say now it's 1 o'clock so maybe around 2 2:30 i'll be there we have a meeting so i will not ask you to come today because i will have to check whether the in charge is there so that i can take it from him and give it to you so i will inform you in the meanwhile in the meanwhile anyway any one of you if you can collect from from other groups please collect not only i got the other experimental videos also if somebody has already shared i do not know if somebody has already shared you can collect those videos and go through the first video or this particular video i should not say first this particular video on i got test okay go through that this particular discussion is over go through the video first and then if you are stuck up with any question please ask me right now if you have any question please tell me
so far i remember it was oranna subra naskar who used to have lot of questions in mechanics class am i right yes sir yeah do you have any question now uh no sir <laughs> okay fine go through the video go through the for everyone for everyone for everyone i am saying go through the video see the video carefully in the video it's not only the video is presented some uh, some of our uh, colleagues he will be explaining the procedure as well once again he will be repeating the whole thing which i have been repeated uh, for the last few few uh, minutes so then after going through the video if you are stuck up anything write in the group let us keep the group group alive i will what i will do i will write few questions in the group few questions in the group no you are not supposed to answer those questions and submit back to me no not at all these questions i will give just so that you can prepare the answers to this question and keep a note ready with you road a note ready with you because the end of the semester i will ask you to submit a, a sort of a, a answer sheet comprising of some questions some of the questions already i have given or i will be given yeah, in the, giving in the next uh, few minutes okay or maybe towards the end of the, uh, uh, after i will have to go to the university so maybe in the afternoon i will give it to you so go through the questions try to get the answers and i probably i told you i would prefer you to go through the book of w d callister and george deter george deter one book is of w d callister probably you have read it the book on on material science and the another book is written by george deter and the name of the book is mechanical metallurgy so you should consult these two books i will write the names in the in the group as well okay is the cr here shottam where is the cr nahi mon hote sir didir bhi ete gache okay 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 so it's only 17 including me anyway people should be present in good numbers anyway that's not a issue we can take care of that because it's online class these things keep on happening i don't mind okay if you are stuck up may not be now if you are stuck up or if you have any question in your mind write in the group i will love to answer no problem okay so let me stop now okay thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir